Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of arctan of x over x minus 1 cubed dx. All right, pause the video if you want to try it on your own. I'm going to jump right in. As soon as I see that we have some inverse trig function, arctan, arc sine, etc., my mind immediately goes to integration by parts. So let's start off that way. I'm going to let you be arctan of x. And then that means dv would need to be 1 over x minus 1 cubed dx. Lovely. Then from here, next step, let's find du and v. So du is derivative of arctan of x, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Don't forget the dx. And then we need to find v, antiderivative of 1 over x minus 1 cubed. So it's helpful if you want to think of this as x minus 1 to the negative third dx. To find the antiderivative, just add 1 to the exponent. So adding 1 to negative 3 makes it negative 2. And then divide by the new exponent. Beautiful. Okay, now our integral is going to be equal to, by our biparts formula, u times v. So let me write that as negative 1 half. We'll put x minus 1 to the negative second first, and then arctan of x minus integral of v times du. Notice, though, here I have a negative 1 half. So I'm going to put the 1 half actually outside the integral and then change it to plus. And then since I have all of this, this x minus 1 is to the negative second power, I'm going to put it in the denominator with the 1 plus x squared. So I'm just going to write my integrand nice and clean. 1 over x minus 1 squared times, oh, I kind of see where this is going. Let me write it as x squared plus 1 dx. Because yes, it's time to find the partial fraction decomposition of this little integral that results. And then after that point, you're basically home free. Now, this is kind of where I really loved this problem because in solving for the coefficients for the partial fraction decomposition, we had a lovely little system of equations emerge. It was quite fabulous. So let's jump right in. So we have, I'm going to leave the one half outside. It really, you know, is just going to be cleaner that way. So we have one over x minus one squared times x squared plus one. Also, I like this one because it shows you shows if you really know how to set up the decomposition. So x minus 1 squared is a repeated linear factor. So we have to list it twice in this case since the power is 2. The first time we list it to the first, then we list it squared. You just have a constant in the numerator each time. So we'll put a and then b. Now that's different than the irreducible quadratic x squared plus 1. Then I need a linear expression in terms of x, cx plus d, okay? Now you can't treat the repeated linear factor the same way. You can't just put x minus 1 squared and then put ax plus b or something in the numerator. I used to think that back in the day when I was a wee thing first learning partial fractions. I thought I could come up with a more clever way. No, do it like this. Okay, so from here we're going to multiply through by x minus 1 squared and x squared plus 1. All right, so we'll have 1 equals a times x minus 1 times x squared plus 1 plus b times x squared plus 1 plus cx plus d times x minus 1 squared. Very nice. Now I'm noticing, okay, I have four unknowns, A, B, C, D. So I'm going to have a system of probably four equations emerging, right, in order to solve. But um, it, it could get messy. I mean, four unknowns, four equations. One thing I can do to kind of give myself a little bit of a head up, like a leg up, is I can substitute in 1 for x, and that will at least give me b, which will help me out because then I'll only have three unknowns moving forward. If I could do that for other, you know, unknowns, I would, but when you have irreducible quadratics, you're kind of stuck compared to other scenarios. So we're just going to let x equal 1. This is just to help me out down the road. So then I have 1 equals a times 0 plus b times 2 plus, you see, you have c 
times one plus D, who cares, because times zero, right? So then that tells me one is two B, so B is a half. Beautiful, save that, we're gonna use it momentarily. And then yeah, I'm just gonna multiply everything out at this step, okay? All right, let's concentrate. So one equals A times, this is gonna be X cubed plus X minus X squared minus one plus B times X squared plus one. I'll distribute it later when I do the rest. Plus, this is gonna be CX plus D times X squared minus two X plus one. And then now I have one equals AX cubed plus AX minus AX squared minus A plus BX squared plus B plus, ooh, CX cubed minus 2CX squared plus CX plus DX squared minus 2DX plus D. We almost ran out of space. Okay, perfect. Now we'll set up our system of equations, and then at that point I'll use the fact that we know b is a half to our advantage. Okay, so starting with the highest power term, highest degree term, x cubed. I don't see any x cubes on the left, do you? No, Professor V. Okay, so that means zero has to equal a plus c. Okay, moving down the line, x squared. Any x squareds? No. So zero has to equal negative a plus b minus two c plus d. Oh wow. Minus a plus b minus two c plus d. Okay, x to the first. I don't see any x to the first. So zero must equal a plus c minus two d. A plus c minus two d. And then lastly, our constant term. 1 has to equal all the rest of the terms left over, which should be constants. Negative a plus b plus d. Okay. Now, if we look here at this second equation, since I know b is a half, b is a half, I can substitute that in and write this as negative 1 half equals negative a minus 2c plus d. Okay, and that's that's good because here I have an equation with ACD. Here's another one with ACD. If I can come along and now focus on eliminating D, that'll be perfect because notice right up here I have an equation with just A and C. So if I can eliminate D, then that sets me up to have another equation with A and C and then I can solve from there, okay? Um, alternatively, like, yeah, you could eliminate C and then you'd have an equation with A and D and we know B. So you got a bunch of options, but you have to be strategic. If you just kind of start willy nilly canceling and substituting, I don't think you're going to get anywhere. You got to think this one through. That way it falls into place. Okay. So in order to eliminate D, that's what I'm choosing to do. You live your best life. I'm going to multiply this whole equation by two. So it'll become negative one equals negative two a minus four c plus two d. And then, yep, 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 this guy's gonna get written right underneath. So zero equals a plus c minus two d. Add these up, these go bye bye. Then we have negative one equals, that's right, negative a minus three c. And then who's been waiting for us? Right here, zero equals a plus c. Boom, boom, boom. Then we have negative one equals negative two c. So c is a half. Love it. If c is a half and a plus c is zero, then that tells me, that's right, a is negative one half. Very good. And then don't forget, we already know b is a half. So then all that's left is to find d. Let's do that from this last equation. Why not? It's been neglected. One equals negative a, which would be positive half, plus b, which is a half, plus d. So this is one, so d must be zero. And we are done, okay? Actually loved that this was a little bit more involved than your typical partial fraction decomp because I find that even in you know calculus two, some of my students struggle to solve systems of equations. 
And it's an important skill, especially when you get to multivariable and you have to work with Lagrange multipliers. They're nonlinear systems often. So it's, you know, make sure you've got your wits about you. Don't forget. Okay, now let's put it all together from what we had earlier when we started doing by parts. So we have negative one half x minus one to the negative second times arctan of x plus one half times the integral of, now a was negative one half over x minus one, then we have plus b is positive one half over x minus one squared plus c is a half times x plus d was just zero times x squared plus one dx. Good? Okay, so this is gonna be negative, let me write it as arc tan of x over two times x minus one squared. Doesn't that look a wee bit better? I think so, I certainly think so. Okay, now let's start anti-differentiating term by term. So antiderivative of one over x minus one, I'm just gonna keep this negative one half times one half out front. So it'll be negative one fourth natural log absolute value x minus one, yes? Okay, now remember this denominator is x minus one to the negative second. So if you add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, you'll get negative one over x minus one. And then don't forget, we have to multiply all that by one fourth. So let me write that as negative one over, you betcha, I don't like that that's crooked though. We've worked so hard, let's just finish it nicely. One over four times x minus one, yes? Okay, now the last one, yes, we can do it in our head. You guys got this. You could do a u sub if you like, but there's no need. You have x to the first, never mind, we're just gonna have a one fourth in the front. If you let u be x squared plus one, du would be two x dx. I don't have a two, so I'm gonna also divide by half or divide by two, so multiply by a half. So then I've got half, half, another half, one eighth. If I just have one over u in the denominator, antiderivative would be ln absolute value u, but x squared plus one's always positive. So I'm just gonna leave it with parentheses, put plus c, and box this with pride, okay? Now none of y'all told me what level math you're in, because I asked earlier. Do you need to see the u subs and whatnot? And no one said a thing. So I'm assuming you don't need me to do it. But if you're still in Calc 2 or finishing up Calc 1 and that was just way too crazy that I did all this in my head, just leave me a little comment so I know. I just want to get a heads up where you guys are all at. And no shame, honestly, please. Like I've been doing this for decades by now, believe it or not. Yep. And then you just get more and more comfortable with it. But nobody comes out of the womb, you know, integrating by parts or whatnot. It just takes practice, perfect practice at that. Yes, we can have a discussion about some study tips in the future. And that concludes the integral of the day. I hope you liked it. I had such a good time. I solved it right now early in the morning. I like to do it when I have my coffee and it just gets the brain warmed up and ready for the day ahead. Thank you guys so much for your support. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you solved it differently. I'm so curious if you took a different approach, how it turned out. And yeah, let me know what level math you're in just so I can kind of cater the content accordingly and the degree to which I explain some of the steps.